Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to build this retro arcade machine. We really enjoy doing this project, so we are going to share it with you. If you want to learn how to make one yourself, keep watching. So first we need to set up the computer that will run the games. In this case we use the Raspberry Pi 3. It's a credit size single board computer that has 1 GB of RAM and it's really cheap. It costs around $40 and you can buy it online or in an electronic store. It has 4 USB ports, 1 Ethernet port, 1 HDMI port, audio 3.5 mini jack and one micro SD card slot. And in this third version of the Raspberry Pi, it also has Bluetooth and wireless. As a power supply, you'll need either the official charger of Raspberry Pi or a smartphone charger. The minimum requirements are at least 5 volts and 2000 milliamperes. You will also need an USB cardboard and a micro SD card to boot the games. We use a 32GB micro SD, but I think 16GB is more than enough. And to play, you can use any USB controller. You can use also wireless controllers like the ones for PS3 or Xbox 360. To make the machine, we used a USB arcade style joystick gamepad that we bought on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. You also need a computer monitor or TV screen. We bought this one of 15 inches in second hand. Optionally, you can buy the official case of Raspberry Pi to protect it, which costs around $8. These are the internal components you need to build the arcade machine. Then you have to install a software called RetroPie, which is a software that allows you to turn your Raspberry Pi into a retro gaming machine. It has several emulators from different video co game consoles, such as ColecoVision, Dreamcast, Game Gear, Game Boy Advance, Mac, Mami, Sega Master System. As you can see, there are a lot of options with this software. I'll put the link of the official page on the description box where you can download it and follow the steps to install it. You don't worry because it's easy. So now you are one step closer to build your arcade machine. And now the second part of the project consists in building the wood structure. First the components need to be placed exactly where they will be inside the structure. Once you have it, do the patterns of each surface with cardboard. I won't be giving any size measures of these patterns because they depend on the size of your components. Then you draw the pattern on the wood board for each surface and if you have the tools, cut the board at home. In case you don't have them, possibly the store where you bought the wood boards can do that for you. And to connect the boards together, we used wood glue and screws. As you can see, we've put a 3.5 jack connection so you can plug your headphones on it. We also put a, the arcade joystick a bit tilted, like in the original arcade machines, using two wood triangles, which were also glued and screwed. For the game pad board, we use plywood where we draw and cut the button's positions. We use the same material for the monitor board, which was also glued with hot glue. Here you can see how we connected the wood pieces. And in the back part we made a wooden door in the upper half to protect the components, leaving the lower half open so that the Raspberry Pi was accessible in case you wanted to take it out and use it somewhere else or for some other purpose. 
As you can see, we put a plug with three entrances, one for the Raspberry Pi, another one for the monitor, and the last one for the ven a ventilator that is coupled to the sidewall to improve the raspberry cooling. And finally we arrive to the part I like the most, the decoration. First you choose your favorite video game characters using Google Images. Then print them in the size you want and arrange them like a collage on both sides of the structure. Then you'll need an A2 size Asted sheet. It has to be big enough to cover the lateral template. Now place your collage under the Asted sheet and draw the outlines of the side template with a permanent black marker. And then using the same marker, draw the outline of the, all the video game characters like so. You can use this technique in drawings that already have a black outline, like this Ninja Turtle, but also in those that haven't, like this Mario Bros. As you'll see, the result will be fantastic in both. After that you have to paint the characters using acrylic paint. Try to paint the same tone color of the drawing to get a prettier image and paint all the parts of the drawings that have the same color. You can also use this dotting tool which is normally used to make manicure to paint the smaller parts. But you can also use a thin brush or a toothpick. Parts, don't forget to paint them in the first place and then the darker colors at last. This is another example. In this Sonic, paint first the clear blue shiny parts and once it's dry, go for the dark blue color. This is how it looks when you're painting, but then you turn the sheet around and you'll see your painting is pretty amazing. For the background, I wanted to paint a galaxy themed sort of background, so I used black card sheet. Draw the outline of the lateral side. And paint with acrylic paint. Using a sponge like this to make a cloud effect. You can use blue, green or purple colors for, for this. To make some stardust effect, put some white acrylic paint on the toothbrush and splatter the paint. And I also made some bigger stars using the dotting tool. So now it's time for you to put a name on your Arkham machine. To make it, go to dafun.com, as a website with lots of free funds and put write the name you want. It will show it how it looks like. So print screen it and then print it. It's very important for you to turn the name upside down before you draw it. Draw the outline with a black permanent marker. And I also added two cute Mario Bros stars to the name name in the color you want using acrylic paint. I love the black and white contrast for the letters, so I recommend you do this. You do it like this, but you can use the color you want. Don't worry if you paint over the black part, because your painting is in the back side of the drawing. To the controller parts, I use a, as a pattern the level 1 of Super Mario Bros. background. If you want to make it like this, search the image on Google and as always, don't forget to flip it. Resize until you have the size you want and then use the same technique you've been using the whole time.
slide the image to continue drawing. You can also print it on paper and draw it like we made with the sides. For the pipe too, to make the pixel effect, you can use the learning tool or toothpick. And this is how it looks like. Pretty awesome, don't you think? This was the first time I experimented with this technique and I found it amazing. And now you have to attach all these parts to the wood structure. To make it, first join the black card and the asset sheets using small clips. And then attach both using adhesive or scotch tape. After that you have to glue them to the wood structure and then for that I use hot glue, a hot glue gun. This is my favorite type of glue as you can see in many of my videos. Use the same method to attach all the other parts of the arcade machine. And to style it a bit and hide the visible wooden parts, you can put a desert tape around all the borders. For the joystick part, put the glue around the buttons first and then attach the sides. You can also put the white tape in all the borders of your RV machine. For the wood part of the monitor, I used a different technique. I painted directly with acrylic, like acrylic paint. And you can use uh, you can use this technique also on the lateral bars instead of using the black card. Uh, I'm sure the result will be exactly the same. And here we have our homemade retro arcade machine. Hope you liked it as much as we do. It's a really cool project to make if you are a fan of retro games. And if you were thinking about making one yourself, I hope this tutorial made it easier and gave you the courage to start it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next tutorial!